So June, scoliosis, um, over the long term, can a person lead a normal, healthy life with the diagnosis of scoliosis? Absolutely they can, um, particularly if they look for non-invasive um, treatments because once you have the surgery, it's, it gets a little more difficult. Your limitations are only as far as I think you allow them to be, but it is definitely more difficult having had the surgery than, than going through um, natural protocols. So what a typical scenario is, somebody gets diagnosed by their pediatrician, um, usually in some cases they're told, well, come back in six months, let's take another x-ray, or uh, they don't even take an x-ray and it's just diagnosed based on visual. Um, what would you suggest uh, that a family or person do when they're first diagnosed uh, in that manner and told to come back? Find a doctor fast who knows something about scoliosis because scoliosis can progress very, very quickly and uh, depending on each case, uh, each case is different. So if um, a child has a mild case at, at, and is diagnosed within the six months, irreparable damage could be done. So they're better off finding somebody right away who knows something about scoliosis and is ready to monitor it um, and, uh, and treat it immediately. Early treatment can mean early correction and never seeing that case get to be severe. As we know, the earlier it's located or diagnosed and seen on x-ray, the, the easier it is to fix. Once it gets past 30 degrees in that region, it becomes more complex. Um, it's also common for uh, patients to be then sent to an orthopedist. Frequently there, if it's not too severe, and by that it's a subjective measurement by the doctor, what's not too severe, they're told to again come back, or let's put a brace on, or in some cases, uh, let's wait and we'll see, maybe we'll need some surgery, maybe we won't. Um, since an orthopedist specialty is, is, is as a surgeon, uh, what is the best course for a patient who is looking for a non-surgical uh, route for scoliosis once it's diagnosed? Well, I, you know, when I was diagnosed with scoliosis, that was back in the dark ages before the internet and uh, a lot of information available. Today we have access to that and a simple search on the internet for non-invasive scoliosis procedures will turn up the scoliosis correction center. Well, one of the problems with that is, and of course that's a uh, it's nice to hear in that respect, but what, what's uh, a problem is that there are many, many, many doctors and, and clinics that are now advertising we can, we can cure scoliosis, which uh, actually brings me to another sort of related question is, can scoliosis be cured? No, it cannot. It is a lifelong condition. It is one that can be managed just like any other lifelong condition, but uh, it doesn't go away and it actually will get worse at certain hormonal spikes during somebody's life, um, particularly women, they'll experience uh, an increase in the curvature during, uh, from pregnancy or during perimenopause, premenopause, menopause. And, uh, well, what happens when a patient, I mean, I, I think that from my 35 years of experience that when a patient is, to is told you need spinal surgery, that will take care of the problem, isn't, isn't a, that situation it, it, basically inferring to the family that we're going to cure this situation. It is that what happened to you or your it, experience? It, 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 it did in some ways, but I think that's typical Western medicine thinking that surgery, and, and even patients that go to Western doctors um, believe that the surgeon is going to fix their problem. And that isn't the case with any surgery, let alone scoliosis surgery. All that does is correct the curvature, but then when you correct that curvature, you've got other areas of the body that are impacted, the hips and the neck and the, and the knees. And so that kind of treatment does not allow for the entire body mechanics to be looked at. And, and that's, so it will not fix the problem, it will only move the problem to another area. And actually what happens statistically is that it will regress about six and a half degrees within two years, mm -hmm. uh, and then about one degree per year after. So uh, what happens in many cases post-surgically is that 20 to 30 years down the line, sometimes less, that's when the patient all of a sudden realizes their condition is worse than it was when they started, mm -hmm. uh, but they were under the impression that it was going to be cured once and for all. And there is no cure. And, and it, the other part of it is that when, um, when you go through surgery, you're, you're asking for a set of complications that are related to the surgery, and separate from the scoliosis. So you not only have to deal with what happens to your scoliosis as you get older, but also the complications from surgery like neuropathy, nerve damage, infection arthritis. 
Well, you once said one of your quotes is that the first surgery leads to the second. Mm -hmm. um, Yes. And uh, that's, uh, well, what, what did you mean by that, actually? Well, in many, as in my case, the first surgery fused three vertebrae, and then, um, but the scoliosis was still there, so the curvature continued, and all it did was require a second surgery to fuse nine vertebrae, and then um, additional surgeries to correct the correction of that correction. And you just can't, it, one surgery often leads to another because of the complications of the surgery itself and the nature of a condition that wants to continue to curve the back. I think that scoliosis, by and large, is an under-researched area of healthcare. Uh, and it is because, in part, you can't take a pill to fix the problem, right. which Western medicine is very good at. You can't cosmetically cure it with surgery. And so there's no one answer which Western medicine tries to find, an antibiotic, a uh, cure for cancer, so to speak, which hasn't been found. Uh, so with scoliosis, what do you what do you suggest? Uh, I know we talked about first being diagnosed. What about somebody uh, who has a already advanced scoliosis, doesn't know what to do? What should they do? Uh, somebody with an advanced scoliosis, it really depends on what treatments they've already tried and um, what whether or not they have surgery. They have whether or not they had surgery. But overall, any scoliosis patient needs to look at their, their complete fitness. They need to make sure that their core strength is there, that their nutrition is good. They need to make sure that they are doing things to help enhance relaxation and lower pain levels. Um, all of those things are for every scoliosis, scoliosis patient, and they are not supplied by Western medicine. Right. Um, and, and that's part of the problem with, with research is that it is, it, I think we, what we need to do is we need to find out more about what's causing it. Um, and I mean, you look at, especially on the surgical side, on, on the surgical side, the surgery that they do is still basically the same surgery that it was done Correct. in the 1960s. Exactly. And we've made advances in almost every other medical in, area, but not in scoliosis. Now, fortunately, on the non-surgical side, as you know, there have been advancements in the last 10 years, including your protocol, uh, and there's, on, on the non-traditional side, there actually has been an increasing understanding that scoliosis is a whole body, disease, whole body condition and it requires a, a complex, multi, multi-faceted approach. Yeah, we have, as you know, we have patients from all parts of the world that contact us because they are looking for an alternative. In mo most cases, they've been uh, diagnosed, they've either braced, in some cases, surgery, but most of the time they haven't had surgery and they're looking for something that will deal with the entire situation, which is which would be considered non-traditional. So the public, basically because of the internet perhaps, has wide choices and um, you know that's both primarily a good thing because they can become more educated about it uh, and seek out less uh, invasive therapies. Right. And I think there is a growing movement of people who are looking for a less invasive treatment. I look at you know, the hardware, and I can't imagine how any mother could put that in a 14-year-old or 12-year-old daughter, but, you know, I think that that's, that um, mindset of, I, I want to do surgery last is increasing, thankfully, and that's because there are more, more treatment methods that are available now versus, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah, I think that the only real reason for surgery, which it would have been a cosmetic one, but even spinal surgery does not reduce the rib arch, no. also known as the hump. Uh, so that doesn't even help that. No. In, in most cases, the scoliosis surgery only corrects the lateral curve. It doesn't do anything about the rotational curve. Right. So they're still left with that, that curvature and the complications that come from that. I think the hardest thing, one of the hardest things we have is, is communicating to patients that this is a uh, a situation that you can live with normally, you have certain parameters, certain things that you need to do, it should be considered the entire spine, the entire body, um, and there's a emotional component that's important for you, the patient, to understand and get comfortable with, and yeah, so I have scoliosis, and now what? Let's move on from there. Uh, and the emotional aspect is difficult too, because you are talking about a condition that creates a deformity in a society that praises beauty, and um, and you know it's difficult for a 12-year-old girl or even a boy to you know go to a pool party and to you know and take off their T-shirt and, right, and right. Uh, you know and 
some children are going to experience difficult times in school because of it, and others are going to be fortunate and have the support around them exactly. to um, to sail through it. Exactly. And it's very, very important.